Hey guys, uh, welcome to this channel weekly and I'm uh, Narik. In the next series of videos, uh, we will be talking about uh, how to build a sample blockchain network uh, involving different organizations and consortiums using Hyperledger Fabric blockchain network. So I'll be talking about how uh, Hyperledger Fabric allows organizations to collaborate in the formation of the blockchain networks. So if you're an architect, administrator or a developer, it gives a solid understanding of uh, major structures and the process components in the Hyperledger Fabric blockchain network. So before we go ahead, uh, kindly subscribe to this channel and hit the bell icon so that uh, you get the latest updates of the videos being uploaded. So before we get into how to build this uh, sample network, uh, let's re recap some of the important topics which we discussed as a part of earlier videos. We started with uh, what is Hyperledger, the Linux Foundation, and what are the different frameworks like Fabric, Iroha, Indy, uh, Sawtooth, Burrow, and what are the different tools that are being incubated in the Hyperledger. We also talked about uh, Hyperledger functionalities and models, something like privacy, confidentiality, modularity, etc. And we talked about something like what are assets, nodes, ledgers, channels, chain code, etc. However, we, we left some topics, something like uh, identities, MSP and CA, which we'll be discussing in the future lectures. So in this video, we'll talk about uh, introduction of how we create a network and how do we add various components so that multiple organizations come together as a consortium to form the network and the permissions are determined by the set of policies that are agreed by the consortium when the network is originally configured. So if you see these points in the sample network we will just start with the basic network. We will add network administrators to the network. We will define consortium and we will create a channel for the consortium. We will add P's and ledgers to that consortium and application and smart contract chain codes for that consortium and finally we would be seeing the consortium network. Then again we will be adding another consortium to the network. We will add new channel to it we will be adding peers and peers to the channels and we will join the peers to the multiple channels. So this will be the outlay of how we are going to do the sample network. So I will be showing the, uh, the final product of how the channel would be. This picture has been taken from the Hyperledger documentation and I would be explaining from the from the starting of how we form the network and the completion of this full network. So if you could see here, there are four organizations, R1, R2, R3 and R4. So R1 is something like violet, R2 gray, R3 is orange and R4 is green. So they all decided and written into an agreement that they will set up and exploit a hyperledger fabric network. So the R4 has assigned to be the network initiator. So it has been given the power to set up the initial work version of the network. So R4 actually doesn't have any intention to perform the business transactions on the network. But R1 and R2 would form a consortium and they need some private communications within the original network. Same goes with R2 and R3. They would also need to do privately communicate with each other so that uh, in the all in the in R2 and R3 would be would also be needing a channel for that. So organization R1 if you could see has a client application A1 that can perform business transactions within channel C1 and if you see organization R2 has a client application that can do similar work both on 
channel C1 and channel C2. Organization A3 has a client application A3 that can do this on channel C2. So there are peer nodes. If you can see peer node 1 maintains a copy of ledger L1 and a smart contract S5 associated with channel C1. And peer node P2 maintains a copy of ledger associated with channel C1 and a copy of ledger L2 associated with channel C2. It also has two smart contracts, smart contract 5 and smart contract 6. The P node P3 maintains the copy of ledger L2 which is associated with channel C2. So this full network is governed according to the policy rules specified in the uh, network configuration C4. So this network is under the control of uh, organizations R1 and R4. Uh, the channel C1 is governed according to the policy rules specified in channel configuration CC1. So this channel is under the control of organizations R1 and R2. Same way, channel C2 is governed according to the policy rules specified in the channel configuration CC2. The channel is under the control of organizations R2 and R3. You can also see there is an ordering service O4 that services as a network administration point for the network and is used as the systems channel. The ordering service also supports application channels C1 and C2 for the purpose of transaction ordering into blocks for distribution. So we, we, we talked about ordering service, the basic function of the ordering service is to order into blocks and then send it for distribution to other peers. So each of the four organizations have a preferred certificate authority. For the organization 1 it is CA1, organization R1 it is CA1, for organization R2 it is CA2, for the organization R3 it is CA3 and for the organization R4 it is CA4. So in the next video, we will start building up a network and in the series of videos, once you complete all those videos, you will be having something like this. Thank you for staying with me. That's all in this video. Sign off.